welcome to 3D printing with me, Anton Monson. Today we will be looking at uh, camera rigs and how to create your own rig with a 3D printer and uh, Rhino software. Okay, so, so let's I won't started. really be showing um, that much um, <laughs> new concept drawings, but uh, I want to share some of the design thoughts that I have. It, it's simply a, a shoulder rig for digital um, SLR cameras. And uh, the goal is to have everything 3D printed, except for the rods, of course, and to have uh, uh, type this um, uh, follow focus so that you can print it and adapt it to uh, your kind of rig. So uh, the first thing that I'm, I'm doing is to um, open up a file uh, which has a measurement for the screw, which is wrong, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, but I'm creating... Um, uh, a channel for a tube which is 20 millimeters thick uh, so that's a kind of standard tube and um, this video is basically to show you how I did it and not really presenting the project that much uh, if you want to see more about the project there will be a video shortly explaining what I want to do how I want to share it and what kind of features I'm looking for um, I'm very much looking for feedback and for suggestions on, on what to have in this in this rig. Um, as I said, the goal is to share this with everyone. So if you have a 3D printer or a friend or your school has a 3D printer, um, you can just uh, download the files and print them and assemble a fully functional rig. And it will also be available in Europe for, for ordering, I think. Depends on the, on the outcome. If people really like it and don't have access to th 3D printers maybe we'll do some kind of deal anyway, um, so I'm in Rhino right now just um, drawing up this uh, construction um, I'm going to link you some this uh, YouTube videos for learning how to draw in Rhino but it's very simple um, and also when you're designing for 3D printers it's usually quite simple uh, you want to work with the 2D drawing and then extrude it. You don't want to work with two complex parts because you have to be able to print them as well. Uh, and sometimes I rather not use any support material, but that, that's a, it's it's up to you. Um, so right now I'm just uh, chamfering off all the sharp edges to uh, to avoid any um, areas where uh, uh, where cracks can can occur so after that you just mirror the image and select all the parts group them and then extrude them and that's really how, how you create a volume and of course you have to cap it so um, I think I'll redo it just one second and um, yeah that's about how you do the first part and then the second part which uh, I did a quite stupid mistake actually um, you can see that the, the drawing, the default file I used, I have files for my different kind of screws uh, and uh, tolerance that's good for 3D printing. In this case, uh, the 3D printing uh, settings were different than last time, uh, which means that the, um, <laughs> the, the margin is way off. Um, but the, the concept is to have a screw, um, or rather a place for a screw that you can... Uh, um, just assemble and glue if you want to and then you have a, a, a thumb screw so you can uh, tighten the um, the part against the rods so you can see that I'm extruding the, the holes for the screws um, placing them in the model where I want them to be I'm, I'm going to do a, a boolean operations removing the um, screws later on you can see it's quite simple in Rhino, it sure looks fast, but uh, I mean all I'm doing is drawing, uh, combining, trimming, and then extruding, and then like moving around them. So it's very simple, and um, I recommend you to use Rhino, or you can even use Google SketchUp Pro uh, to get some... Um, uh, you have to have the files ready for 3D printing. You can also use Autodesk uh, 123D, uh, which is a great free software for creating... Yeah any 3D parts basically uh, and it's also good for working with measurements so uh, I'm also doing just a, a groove um, to be able to slide in the screw uh, or, or the bolts better so there you can see I've um, made a hole for the screw so you, um, so you can uh, 
take the bolt uh, from the top and then you have the the um, uh, sorry the nuts up from the top and then you have the bolt from from below with the thumb screw so I will start to draw the thumb screw right now and kind of create a quite simple design Th this is my my usual design when I when I'm doing thumb screws of any sorts I've done a lot of GoPro accessories and so on that I've 3D printed so I'm quite quite used to doing uh, thumb screws but basically you you move the, the those lines around and you will uh, sweep them around or actually do a loft uh, loft around yes Oops. and I mean if you want you can spend much more time on this but uh, in this video I just want to show you the, the um, how it works and how uh, how you do this procedure how, how do you start from nothing uh, only an ID and you draw it up in 3d and you <laughs> should make sure all the measurements are right and um, and then you uh, I will show you later on how to send it to a 3d printer and how to uh, to get it out and basically uh, in my video I'm using a uh, MakerBot replicator 2 um, these files, SDL files, works for basically any uh, desktop 3D printer, even commercial 3D printers, if, if you're lucky enough to have access to one of those. So you can see I, I did um, and, uh, the hole for the, the bolt in this as well, so uh, the nut will be in the base plate, and then I will have a bolt in the thumb screw. So now I'm removing so you can get some better grip on the thumb screw. Um, so, this is, as I said, this is just the first video on um, on how it's made, and I will make a complete episode uh, doing all the different steps, and I probably use um, a finished. Uh, I'm not sure that I will have finished drawings before, but I will have some baselines like 20 millimeter rods and shoulder rig and uh, digital SLR camera type Canon 5D. Uh, I'm actually only using a f uh, 550D, um, s um, but but uh, everything will be adjustable so that you can um, mount uh, the what's it called um, full of focus for all kinds of other lenses. Um, but yeah, uh, this, uh, the complete episodes will be. This is an introduction on how it's made. And soon there will be episodes f starting from yeah one, and then uh, I'll uh, make probably ten episodes um, focusing on different parts, and and uh, finally the whole rig itself. And then probably uh, I hope to get a lot of feedback from this. Uh, hopefully I will have a lot of extra features and extra modules that people want to see, so um, so I can create those as well, and you can download them and print them yourself. Yeah, but the goal is to have an, an open system, an open uh, open hardware, basically made made by uh, uh, 3D printed parts. So um, after exporting the SLL files, you should always check your files in uh, software. In the right, I'm using Netfab Studio Basic. It's a free software. You can just download it from netfab.com. Um, it checks the file for any errors, but I already already have my Rhino set up pretty good, so it doesn't create any strange cavities or, or holes. And since I'm using the replicator, I'm also using the MakeAware. So just adding the model and uh, making sure that I have the right printer. And then, yeah, looks around, looks good. It's on the base plate. Using these settings, 10%. Um, this is only a draft. Uh, since it's wrong, it's good that it's a draft. Th this takes around one hour to print, maybe a few minutes more. Uh, the preview here is... Um, it says 80 minutes, that's not really accurate, it depends uh, um, on which speeds you use as well. So just checking the model, everything looks good inside as well. Uh, you can see the honeycomb patterns, then exporting it. And then it's time to uh, just load the uh, SD card into the machine and, and wait for the print.
Okay, so here we have the finished piece. Um, it's actually quite good, but uh, as I mentioned earlier in the clip, uh, unfortunately I did a quite stupid mistake. I used the wrong um, dimensions for these screws that I have. I, I thought I used some other screws that I used previously. Uh, so the result is, as you can see, the screws just slides around. Uh, the des design has uh, a locking design, but it doesn't work if your measurements are like two millimeters off. Um, but I tried to glue one of the screws uh, to show you how it works. Um, but the, of course, the dimension is wrong inside as well, so it doesn't really work. Um, but I can show the design and, and the ambition, which is to have this will actually be on this side. So this will be one uh, modular item that you can have di different kinds of objects at different lengths and you will be able to place cameras, place batteries, accessories on the sides and, and everything. It's, it's a rod based system basically. Uh, and it's all, all 3D printed except for the rods and of course for the screws and the hardware inside. But uh, all the other parts will be 3D printed and uh, as I shown in the clip before, the main part is to have, when, when this base is done, I will have a very, very nice uh, geared uh, follow focus. Uh, but that's for a later movie. Um, what this part will do is to, uh, these two screws will, will grip on and, and close this gap, which then uh, squeezes the rod inside uh, the, these holes. Uh, I designed this with two screws for a reason, and that is because I want a very sturdy construction and I want to have channels. I might even add another channel down here for um, uh, wires and, and microphone cords and everything like that. I will probably make some kind of locking mechanism so that you can actually put a wire because you can't put the wire with a connector through this, uh, but some sort of locking system so that you can get all your wires inside the rig instead of having them uh, move all around and, and possibly using uh, some kind of holder for batteries or um, yeah I'm not really sure yet but the, there will be a, lo a lot of room for, for features so um, as, as the project move on you will uh, see what what, the, what kind of parts are made and I will look forward to, to getting a lot of comments on what to have on a camera rig. Since this uh, is such an easy system that will be 3D printed, it's very fast to design a part and then share it with everyone who wants it. So um, if you have any tips or tricks or ideas or anything you would like to share, just drop a comment and I'll make sure to, to integrate that function in a later version. So this is basically a show on how it will work. So the next episodes will be um, for different parts of the systems. So uh, be sure to uh, subscribe and check out new videos that's, that's coming soon. Thank you. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you have any comments or questions or anything, just uh, drop a comment and let me know. Thank you.